This is exciting. Capture One 22 have just released and I did the obvious thing is to benchmark this new software on all the M1 Pros and M1 Max that I have to run test on. And also I'm testing this on the M1 and Intel machines so that you can see the result and the way how this program performs. Let's find out together. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. There's a lot of information that I'm going to cover and is definitely going to be rich, so I will leave timestamp in the description below so you can jump ahead. If you want to pause at any of the slides for the result, please feel free to do so. Let's take a look at the test and reference system. And before we go on, this is a lot of M1 Pros and M1 Max in both 14 and 16 inch configuration. Yes, it is a crazy amount, but not all of them are mine and I didn't buy all of them, although I did buy a few to run in my testing and I'm keeping those. The rest are my friend's machine that I'm borrowing, so I appreciate my friends who have let me use their machine for a few hours or maybe borrow it in a short period of time for me to run all these tests. Thank you so much. So with this, we have a pretty good spread of machine with different GPU options. So we have the base 14 inch one with the 14 GPU going up to the 16 GPU M1 Pro. 24 GPU M1 Max and also 32 GPU M1 Max to test, including memory that ranges from 16 to 32 in both the M1 Pro and M1 Max and also 64 gigabytes. As far as SSD size, we're not really going to worry about that, but you can pause in this too and see the configuration for each of the machine. As far as the additional test system, I'm using my 2019 Mac Pro, 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro, the M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigabytes of memory and also the M1 MacBook Air, which is pretty much the base spec, eight gigabytes of memory and only seven GPU core. So we're gonna see how all these computer perform together when you see the result. But before then, there are a few interesting surprises that have come up in this test and it's going to make me revise my recommendation about Capture One that I have made in all the other videos and from just deducing all these information, apparently having the machine to test really makes a big difference. So let's find out together what that surprise is. Let's start out by looking at the Capture One 22 import. And for all this, we're going to be testing the same 1000 Nikon D850 file that's 45 megapixel in its original NEF format. I have Capture One render a 5120 pixel preview. And if we take a look at the result right now, this is what you're really seeing between all those six machines. I would say the cluster between all this is expected because they all have 10 CPU. This is a CPU heavy based task. And the time difference between all of them, between for instance, the shortest one and the longest one is 15 seconds. I would say that's not really a big deal at all. That falls within just about the margin of error. So we're not gonna worry about that too much. The machine that took a little bit longer, close to three minutes longer is the base 14 inch one. That one has less CPU cores, so obviously it's going to take a slight bit longer, but it's still nonetheless a pretty good performer. And the amount of RAMs that you're seeing on the system right now doesn't really matter whatsoever because if RAM matters, the 16 gigabyte model would not pop out in the middle as you're seeing right now. So now let's add in the M1s and the Intel machine how, and see how this performs. Well, all those machines come right in at the very bottom of the chart. So these new machines, the M1 Pro, M1 Max are amazing performers. What's interesting about this is that my Mac Mini that costs literally one tenth of my Mac Pro is beating out my Mac Pro by a few seconds. And also the MacBook Air that costs about a fourth of my 2019 MacBook Pro is beating that out. So you can see how powerful these processors, these SOCI are, even though they are just the consumer SOCI. So I'm really happy um, that Apple is really making a move in the right direction. Let's have a look at the export result now. And this is using hardware acceleration, is using a lot of GPU, shorter is better. And this is set to export JPEG at 100%. And we're seeing a few information from this chart. Number one being that you can see the cluster between the Pro and the Max being separated. The Pro takes longer because there are less GPU cores on the system. Although, let's talk about the Pro first. If we take a look at the 16 GPU, these two versus the 14 GPU, we're only talking about less than a minute, maybe 30 seconds longer, 45 seconds longer. I mean, 
it's not really that big of a deal. And considering the price difference between these two processors, it could be anywhere between two to $300. The base performance one is doing a pretty good job. Now, if your thing is using Capture One and you want to get the fastest export performance, fastest rendering as you're using the program, getting the Max is definitely worth it. But there's some interesting results that's happening with the Max. It has nothing to do with the memory, so the memory doesn't matter so much in this situation. But what's interesting is this. Let's look at the Max chart close up. This is the 32 GPU Max, 32 GPU, and this is the 24 GPU version. The price difference between the 32 and the 24 comes out to around $200. But here's the thing. The performance between all of these they're not that big of a difference at all. I would say, yeah, the RAM does make somewhat of a difference, but honestly, if you ask me, I would just save the money and go with the 24 GPU version of this machine, and it's performing really well. It's been in 30 seconds of each other. To, to me, I would consider that a margin of error. Now, the other thing that I also want to add is this is the 14-inch M1 Max with 24 core. This is the one that there's a lot of conversation out there in different forums that this has a processor that has been capped and that has been throttled because of the thermal of the machine. And the fact that it performs within about 30 seconds of the 32 GPU version, I don't see a reason why you should really spend that more money to get the Max to work with Capture One. And all the other photo apps, for example, Photoshop, Lightroom, or any other things you use, doesn't really use the GPU that much. So 24 is going to do the job just fine. One more thing that I also want to point out about this chart, and I'm gonna go back one chart, is the fact that we're still seeing that cluster up here, the Max performing around 30% better than the Pros. We're not really seeing the big performance increase. We're not really seeing the big jump. But what surprised me the most about this is the 14 inch max with the 24 GPU. I mean, this is within a hair of the more expensive machines. That's really all you need to know. And if you want to stop the video here, you can, but wait a second. I'm still going to show you the export result with the M1 and also the Intel. And I will also show you result with HDR and also Panorama. So yeah, there's more. All right. So we take a look at this comparing with everything else. Amazingly enough, the Mac Pro didn't come in dead last this time because it has more memory, because um, it has a Radeon Pro Vega 2 video card with 32 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory. So it does perform better, but that video card costs as much as some of these machines by itself. For example, the video card inside my Mac Pro costs as much as just that machine alone. Um, that really kind of tells you the difference between the performance in general. And the M1 machines along with the 2019 inch MacBook Pro just kind of just falls in behind because they have less powerful GPU in the system. So there's not much that it can really do. So let's now look at an HDR merge. This is taking these Nikon D810 files, nine of them, and merging it together into a HDR image. And the result is as follows. So this is time using just my watch and their are going to be margin of errors when human interactions have to press and how fast you can press. But for the most part, we're really talking about 20 seconds, 28, 31, and 36 seconds. There's not really that big of a performance jump between them. This is really showing us something that the overall memory in the system does help with the performance a little bit, but very similar to the Topaz test that I've done earlier in the video that I have released, you're going to see that between 32 and 64 gigabytes, there's kind of that magic threshold in the system for some reason that it doesn't really go in and utilize more. And as I mentioned, 16 gigabytes taking the longest with the, again, base 14 inch one with 32 gigabytes of memory beating out the base 16 inch one that has the top M1 Pro processor. But that one has 32 gigabytes of memory. So a lot of really great things to think about as you're looking through this chart. Comparing this between the rest, well, the M1 Pro and M1 Max sits at the top. And right below that is the M1 and the Intel machine of the yesteryear. So you can kind of see how those are spreading out. Thank goodness the Mac Pro didn't perform that last again, but it's not really that good either when it's still being beat out by the Mac Mini. And now let's have a look at a panorama merge. This is 14 Nikon DA10 file that are 36 megapixel merged together to create a 314 megapixel final file or final image. 
Let's have a look at the preview time. So this is how long Capture One takes from clicking on Panorama Merge for it to generate a preview. You can see that the time spreads out right there. This pretty much has no bearing on the memory whatsoever because you have that 16 gigabyte model just smacked right in the center there. What this really tells us is that the amount of CPU that you have in the system will make a difference because this one's the one with the least amount of CPU. It takes a little bit longer, but only by six seconds. So not that big of a deal. Let's have a look at the preview when we add the Intel machine and also the M1 into it. So when I add the Intel machine in, this falls right into the middle, not too bad. M1 Mac Mini, M1 MacBook Air, you can see that. And the 2019 Mac Pro, the result is empty because it could not generate a preview. I tried selecting different files, it just could not do it. And that was the same fuzziness that happens on the Intel machine too, where I have to select less amount of files for it to go through. But on the M1 Pros and the M1 Max machine, and even just the M1s, it just went through without any problems. So on the Intel machine, there may be something different in the way how it's coded that doesn't really allow to go through and really analyze the picture as well as on the M1 Pro and M1 Max or just on the M1s in general. That could be the thing, but um, like I said, Mac Pro results not here and the MacBook Pro one did took a while for me to be able to stitch something together. Let's have a look at the merge time for just the M1 Pro and M1 Max computer. And we're now seeing a spread for the memory, not so much memory doesn't really play that big of a deal because you can see that the 16 gigabyte model is performing faster than the 32 gigabyte model. And the reason why is this task is highly dependent on just CPU processing in a system in general, CPU and GPU usage. And you can see that the more you have in the system, the faster it is, but not necessarily all the way because you still have the base 14 Pro with the upgraded 10 core 16 GPU up there that still performs quite as fast as the M1 Max with 64 gigabytes of memory. So obviously having 64 gigabytes in this situation makes no difference. Going from 16 to 32, I think is always a good idea, but we're not really seeing that huge of improvement or performance. And if we add in the Intel machines and the M1, you can see that the Mac Mini performs right in the middle, 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro. MacBook Air and my Mac Pro that fails because it could not put together a panorama stitch. That could also be a result from the operating system that I'm using because there are some slight version mismatch. My Mac Pro is the main production machine, so I don't really want to do too much to it. So that could be part of the result. And if I end up doing this test in the future, upgrade that Mac Pro or create a separate container and install OS, I'll probably share with you the result later on. So from my conclusion so far, we have found a lot of interesting things from this test. Number one being that the 24 core performs extremely well. I mean, my goodness, wow. I wasn't really expecting that. But the other thing I'm also seeing is that we're not really getting that much optimization between for the M1 Pros and the M1 Max just yet. It's performing just about the same as it was before. There's not that big of an improvement. So if you use Capture One as your primary program, what GPU should you choose? Well, based on the result that I'm sharing with you so far, I think the best thing that you can do if you take a look at this chart, save $200 and get the 24 GPU version, whether you get the 14 or 16, because it doesn't really matter much. And I don't think you're going to see that big of a performance improvement going to the 32 core GPU option. So for the 14 inch, just get the M1 Max with 24 core GPU. I think that's an option that will work really well. For the 16 one, just pay the extra $200 and upgrade it to the mid tier M1 Max and don't go to the top one. There's really no reason after I'm seeing all these results. As far as memory, we can see in Capture One that having the different memory spread makes no difference whatsoever. Capture One is always really nimble with memory, but having 32 gigabytes on the system as a pro is definitely going to be oppressed because you don't get a lot of slowdowns. And if you end up doing a lot of multitasking, it's going to help out a lot. And you can see from the Panorama Merge that, yeah, having 64 gigabyte maybe increase the task by only a few seconds, but it doesn't really make too big of a deal at all. And you can also see that the 16 gigabyte at the bottom performs better than 32. So it doesn't make too much of a difference in this situation. So shoes 32, that would be my recommendation. And lastly, this is the recommendation chart based on creative area because Capture Run is more akin to Lightroom where it is the primary drive force. Maybe it's the primary editing program that you would use. 
So the recommendation for optimal performance between 14 and 16 is the max with 24 core and 32 gigabytes of memory, upgrade to one terabyte SSD at a minimum, and that's it. That's really all you need. If you want to go for an overkill system, and I did use the term overkill on the slide, you can go for the M1 Max with 32 GPU, and you can bump it up to 64 gigabytes of memory, but unless you're going to use another software, or you're going to multitask a lot where you can really jump up to 64 gigabyte, you really just don't need that. And some of you may be wondering, well, I'm just really testing Capture One 22 in its own environment. How does it compare to Capture One 21? Well, I have a separate video on that that's coming up and consider that the part two to this. So stay tuned to my channel for that video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new. And remember, in art we trust.